Okay, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D Collisions and Game Maker. So, uh, previously we have figured out ray cast, so we figured out how to cast a ray into these basic shapes, figure out where the intersection happens, if one happens, and uh, obtain some additional information about the hit, such as the surface normal of the point of collision, as well as the point of collision itself. And today we're going to be also talking about uh, lines projected into shapes, and that is going to come in the form of a line cast. Uh, so, we're going to take a line with a start and an end point and figure out if the uh, if it passes through a shape. Uh, slightly different from a ray cast, which has a, a point of origin and a direction, and it just travels in, in that direction infinitely. Let's see, let's start with uh, points and checking points for, for lines. So, and I'm sorry if points are just starting to become boring because this is something that we've seen so much of when we're doing things with points, but to check whether a point is between um, the start and the end point of a line, you can either do a little bit of geometry to figure out if the point lies on the line with the slope and y equals mx plus b and all that fun stuff, and I think you'll have to add a third term to that for, uh, for a line in 3D space compared to 2D space, but you can either do that or you can use the code that we've written for figuring out the nearest point to a line, and you can just check to see if the distance to that nearest point and the point itself is zero. Uh, if it does, the point will lie on the line. When it comes to Raycast, when it came to Raycast, I wrote a little bit of extra code uh, that was a little bit more verbose to account for the possibility of including hit information, such as the point of contact and and uh, what I just described. But I'm not going to do that for line segment tests. Uh, for line segments, I'm just interested in if, if the line passes through the object, yes or no. You can, if you want to, figure out the uh, figure out the other information. You can uh, you can do a little bit of simple math to to do that. Ultimately, that would look a lot like just checking for uh, checking for a ray cast, but you are constraining the distance. If the uh, the distance to the hit location is greater than the the length of the line, then there's no collision. But we can do it a little bit simpler than that. So we're in this case, we're just going to return uh, the result of this expression. If the distance is zero, then there's an intersection. If the, if it's not, then there's not. Let's see, I suppose uh, on that note, uh, line segment checks are going to lend themselves to being a little bit more similar, uh, a little bit simpler, sorry, to um, to write than the, the raycast checks. For example, we can we can do something very similar uh, to what we've been doing for, for spears, uh, in that we can just check to see if the nearest point to the, to the line uh, from the spear is, uh, is less than or equal to the spear's radius. And uh, once again, I'm sorry if this is a little bit boring, but uh, I'll be honest, I need an easy video because the, uh, the last two have went on for quite a while. And I want to have the line related uh, collision check videos wrapped up today. And, uh, and my voice is getting tired. So to check to see if a point is on the line, if a sphere is on the line, uh, we can get the nearest point to the, uh, to the line from the sphere. And we can, uh, we can see if that is less than or equal to the sphere's radius. Uh, once again, less than or equal to or just less than, it's up to you. It does not matter to me which um, which way of looking at collisions you prefer. So I did add, and I forget if I if I drew attention to this uh, a couple of videos ago when I was talking about the updates I'd made to this demo project. I did add um, a a line shape uh, like this, and it's a little bit hard to see. Let me let me zoom out. Uh, if I were to rotate it, if or if I were to move it. Otherwise, it would be easier to see. There, we have a line. Uh, so that's just a line segment. It's not like a ray cast out of the screen or anything. It's just a point. It's a, it's a line of a length of, I think, 200. And it's more or less centered around the world origin. And if I were to numpad one, bring in a sphere. That's the one I just had. Uh, if I were to X key on the keyboard, bring in a sphere, numpad four would give us the line segment. We could see that... Uh, the line segment is indeed checking for collision with the sphere correctly. Uh, we have the line, or in this case, is just barely intersecting the sphere by a very, very small amount. If I were to move it a little bit to one way, it would it would not be intersecting. If I were to move it to the other way, it would be. Um, I don't think I've... I can move the line up or down. No, I can't really move it up or down. I can move it left or right, but up or down, not so much. So, uh, so that works. That's pretty simple. Next, when it comes to... When it comes to... Axis align bounding box set check line. Let's be honest, I don't want to touch axis align bounding boxes and lines, and neither do you. So let's just say, let's just uh, borrow some of the code that we wrote for this, and var direction is going to equal line dot finish dot 
subtract line dot start dot normalize. That's going to be our direction. Our um, our ray is going to be a ray new call ray, uh, which has an origin point of line dot start, and it has a direction of the direction that we just calculated. So we are turning this line segment into a into a ray. Um, var result is going to be new ray cast hit information. And I am just done with, with access line bounding boxes. You can probably tell by my voice. Um, that's going to be our hit information. We can say self dot check ray. Um, the, uh, the ray that we, that we just created just now. And the hit information is going to be result. Should I call that result or should I call that hit info? I kind of... By default, I kind of kind of name these things result uh, for the variable name, but to make it consistent with the rest of the code, let's just call it hit info. So we can say if uh, if you detect a collision with this ray and the access line bounding box, then there's there may be a collision. Uh, there's probably a collision with the uh, with the line, but you do have to check to make sure um, if hit info dot distance is less than uh, or I suppose equal to uh, line dot what is it? Is it length? Line dot length uh, return true. Else turn false. So you, so uh, for this to make our lives easy, we're just going to turn this line into a into a ray. We're going to do a ray cast on on the box. Uh, yeah, self dot check ray and. If the distance to the hit is less than the length of the line, then there is a collision uh, with the with the line and, and the box. Otherwise, there is not. And you can simplify this a little bit further. You can uh, return instead of uh, doing the if else. You can just return this expression. And uh, if self dot check ray does not return true, you can just return false. And that is going to be a line and an axis line bounding box. And I can run the game. I can bring up myself a what is it? A line. And I can bring up myself a a box. Uh, you can see right now the line is hard to see because it blends into the grid. The line is green. The grid is white, um, which makes it a little bit hard to see. But the shapes are overlapping. Uh, if I were to rotate the rotate the line in some way, you can see the shapes are overlapping. The line is now easier to see. You can see that when when the line cuts the box on the corner, uh, you, we start to have a uh, have an intersection there. Uh, the uh, the raycast just popped up because the mouse cursor just also started intersecting the box. Um, and uh, if I were to to move it in other directions, it would. Yeah, I can only move the line side to side. I've only written code to move the line side to side, um, and uh, and also rotate it. Let's see. If I move this back to the origin this way, oh, that's that's moving it. Uh, that's moving it up, not. All right, now I've lost it. It's somewhere out there. No, no collision. So that's uh, that's access to line bounding boxes and lines. And lastly, and honestly, like I said, you could do this almost this exact same strategy for every check line of um of every shape. But it's just that for some of the other shapes, it is slightly slightly easier, slightly less typing, slightly less code, slightly more efficient to just uh, to just do it like this to just figure out the intersection in other ways. But um, if you if you want to do that, that is a valid approach. So planes, planes are going to be a little more. First, I'm going to say var dir for direction is going to be line dot finish uh, finish dot sub line dot start. But I'm not going to turn this into a raycast. Uh, I know that we're kind of starting out. Did I call the uh, did I call it direction? I did call it direction. I wasn't sure if I had called it some other weird name up there. But we're going to have the direction uh, for the uh, Plane check line is going to be the line that finish that subtract line start. Uh, we're going to do a couple dot products. One is going to be n dot s is going to be equal to self dot normal dot dot line dot start. The second is going to be var n dot d is going to be self dot normal and dot d. Thank you. Dot uh, dot product against the direction uh, against that vector. Uh, if n dot d is equals is equals equals to zero, so if this is if this value is zero, we're going to return false. Uh, if the uh, if the plane's normals dot product against the direction of the line is zero, then you know the uh, the line and the plane are parallel. 
Uh, as I said before, that is much like, I think I used a different, okay, so it's d.n, which is essentially the, the same thing, but with the uh, the operands of the dot product in the reverse order. Um, if this is if this is the case, if n.d is equal to zero, then the ray and then the line and the plane are gonna be parallel, no intersection. Otherwise, there are a few ways you can think about whether or not a line intersects a plane. Uh, you could consider whether or not the start and the end point of the line are on different sides of the plane, which actually might be both less like lines of code and less for the computer to calculate. Actually, I think it'll be about the same. Let me keep going with this method. Um, so next, if uh, if the line is not parallel to the plane, we can define ourselves a, a t variable. So this is going to be a self.distance minus n dot s divided by n dot d. So this is going to be, uh, it's going to, this t value is very much like the, uh, the t value of some of the other uh, raycast functions. Uh, it's going to be a value between 0 and, I believe, 1. And it is going to be, where is... I lost my place. Down here. No? Yes, down here. Uh, t is going to be a value between 0 and 1, 0 being the start of the line, 1 being the end of the line, and we are going to... Um, if t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1, so if t is within the range of 0 to 1, then that means the point of contact between the line and the plane is, uh, is somewhere on the line. And there will be an intersection, otherwise there will not be. So if, actually since I've, uh, I've been doing these return statements in one expression sometimes when I can, uh, we're just going to say return the, the expression of t is greater than or equal to 0, as I said, and t is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so I now have a line and a plane. Uh, the line is parallel to the plane. It's lying on the plane. No collision is detected. Uh, if I were to uh, move the plane, you can now see the shapes overlap. So the, uh, the line is basically the y-axis right now. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, the line is basically the y-axis. If I were to not draw the, the grid, that might actually be easier to see in this case. Um, unfortunately, if you're just using basic PR underscore line strips, you can't draw a line with width. You need an actual 3D model for that, which uh, would have been a little bit more involved to, uh, to set up. The plane is intersecting the line. If I were to move the plane forward or backwards, uh, you can see here, uh, once, once it goes beyond the extent of the line, you can see where it ends. Uh, the, uh, there is no more intersection detected. If I were to go the other way, the shapes will be overlapping until the plane comes off of the line the other direction. Um, and if I were to, to, move it, to move it back to the middle, you can see at about where, right about here, where the line starts poking through the plane again, we are, we are, we are intersecting again. So that is lines and planes. Okay. Shorter video, easier video. Like I said, I, uh, I kind of needed this one because this uh, today's recording session of of lines and, and shapes has been a little bit a little bit long and a little bit much on the old voice. So that's it for these basic primitive shapes as well as the uh, the line test that I want to do against them. We have the point, uh, we have the sphere, we have the axis aligned bounding box, and we have the plane, uh, and we can also do ray casts and line segment casts against them. Uh, this is sort of Act One of this three D collision series. In the next video, I'm probably going to use this, what we've written so far, to do a, a prim primitive game world of sorts. So I'm going to build a build a game world with some actual shapes that are actually of interest to us. And um, I'll create a player which can be approximated with a sphere and we can walk around the world and collide with stuff and, um, and that sort of thing. After that, when I come back with this, I want to start talking about uh, collisions with triangle meshes. Triangle meshes, when it comes to 3D collision and that sort of thing, are actually really heinously expensive. And um, it's best to avoid them when you can, if you can approximate a object in a 3D world with a sphere or a cube or something like that, you definitely should, because those are much, much, much less expensive to, uh, to test collisions against. But in some cases, you may still want to do that. For example, if you have terrain and uh, you have, the terrain is lumpy and you can't just say that the ground is a flat plane or something like that, then you um you may need a triangle mesh if you have a if it, if you have a funny shaped wall or a funny shaped rock or something like that, uh, it may be difficult to approximate that as basic shapes and you may want a triangle mesh. There are ways that you can speed things up uh, when it comes to organizing a 3D collision world into a hierarchy, which can benefit both triangle meshes and just primitive shapes, and I will be talking about those eventually as well. But 
let's take things one step at a time. Uh, if you want the code for this, it can be found in the GitHub repository in the video description. Uh, this is just line seg segment tests. Did not bother breaking this up into multiple commits because there's, there's so little of it because the line segments tests are so uh, simple compared to uh, raycasts. Uh, look for uh, the week seven line cast branch or by the time this video is public, it should be merged into master. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game. So if you're interested in seeing more of this or just a whole bunch of Let's Plays, feel free to subscribe and stick around. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.